Hi everybody and welcome to the course Algebra 1M. 1M is just uh, letters we use here in the Technion, but it's a uh, first course in uh, uh, university level algebra. And what I want to do in this uh, first lesson is discuss um, uh, a bit of history and what is algebra, uh, what does the word mean? Many people don't even know what exactly do we mean when we say algebra. So Algebra is a field in mathematics where we do calculations, just like arithmetics. But in arithmetics, we do calculations with numbers. And in algebra, we do calculations with things that are not necessarily numbers. For example, uh, you know what quadratic equations are, like something like uh, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So this is an example of a calculation, but we're not working only with numbers, we're working with uh, uh, parameters, and we're working with variables, and that is what we call algebra. That's in essence what we call algebra. Doing calculations, but with things that are not necessarily numbers. Algebraic techniques were uh, known and explored very, very long ago. The ancient Babylonians, and the ancient Greeks, and even the ancient Chinese uh, knew and worked on uh, things like this, things that uh, today we call algebra, um, although the word algebra is from a bit later, and I'll tell you about it in a second. Um, a person called uh, Diophantus, Diophantus, This guy was Greek. He lived in the uh, 3rd century BC. That's uh, more than 2300 years ago. Um, and he lived in Alexandria, which is in modern day uh, Egypt. And he wrote a book on, on algebraic equations and, and techniques of solving algebraic equations. And he's sometimes referred, referred to as the father of algebra. By the way, since this is an international class, let's try working on all sorts of alphabets. So I wrote it here so I don't get mixed up. But we use a lot of Greek letters in mathematics. You'll see that. So when somebody travels to, Greeks, to Greek, he suddenly sees that all the signs, the signs on the road are in math. That's very cool. So in Greek, you spell it D. I hope I'm doing this correctly. I don't really know any Greek. D O uh, Phi, of course. D O Phan Tus. I hope I'm spelling it correctly. Um, anyway, this guy, this guy is very, very important. In fact, it's in his book, or rather in a translation of his book to Latin, that uh, the, the very famous mathematician Fermat, which you may have heard, out, heard about, wrote the famous Fermat's Last Theorem. And we'll talk about that uh, later. It's another cool story. Um, so the methods, the methods that we're going to see in algebra were developed to all sorts of of, of uh, mathematical structures, and many of them we're going to discuss in this course. For example, polynomials, which you may, may know already. For example, matrices. For example, uh, vectors. All these are mathematical uh, objects on which we can do calculations. We can add, subtract, multiply in various ways. That's algebra. And uh, Later on, more towards the 19th century, these techniques, these algebraic techniques, were expanded to more abstract structures like groups and rings and fields. And we're going we're gonna to discuss these lightly in this course. We're, we're going to briefly mention what groups are. We're going to uh, discuss fields with a bit more detail. Um, but modern algebra is actually abstract in nature. Modern algebra is really an abstract topic, very abstract. Um, a very important contribution to, to algebra was in the time of the, of the uh, Islam, uh, which is uh, around the 9th and 10th century, a thousand years ago. In fact, the world al algebra itself stems from, from a book written by a mathematician uh, an Arab mathematician. In fact, he was, 
he was Persian originally, but he worked in what is now modern day Baghdad in Iraq. And his name was Muhammad al Khawarizmi. That was his name. And he wrote a book, and now I'm going to try see what I can do in Arabic. So he wrote a book called Al Kitab. Al Kitab. I hope I'm, I'm not making any crucial mistakes. Il Muhtasar Fi Chisab Il Jabbar Il Jabbar wa Il Mukabala wa Il Mukabala. So Arabic has beautiful uh, writing, I just love it. And what this means, here's the translation to, to English, the compendious, compendious uh, book on calculation by completion and balancing. This is the translation of El Khawarizmi's book from the 9th century. And this may look like a mouthful, but it's really not. If you think about it, how do you solve algebraic equations? How do you solve equations in general? What you usually do is this word here, balancing, or this word here, completion. For example, you add 3 to both sides when on one side you have a minus 3, right? Or you multiply both sides of the equation by 5. So that's this notion of balancing, which you do all the time and you know well, and the notion of completion, to complete, for example, completing the square, to make something into a f complete square where you can then take a root, and all sorts of these techniques. And this word here, completion, in Arabic, al-jabbar, turned into the word algebra, which is what we call the entire subject today. So that's al-Khawarizmi, that's the ninth uh, century. Um, as I said, modern algebra uh, deals mostly with abstract uh, 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 mathematical uh, objects and abstract uh, um, uh, structures of mathematics. It flourished in the 19th century, inspired by works of, of famous mathematicians like uh, um, Galois, Evariste Galois, he was a French mathematician, and Abel, Niels, Henrik Abel, he was a Norwegian mathematician. Um, their stories are very interesting, but we have to leave some stories for later on. And today, algebra is really related to mostly any topic in mathematics and any topic in, in applications of mathematics. And, um, and let's, let's get started with algebra. That's going to be in the next clip.